Hi guys and welcome to episode 13 of Kent Walks. This week we visit a seemingly small and peaceful village on top of the North Downs, Hastingly. But as nondescript as it may first appear, let's see what we can dig up. Not literally. The walk starts at the roadside car park just above Broad Down at grid reference 079453. From the car park, be sure to pop over the road and take in the wonderful view from Broad Down, over towards Troy Town and Brook. When you finally tear yourself away, head northwest along the road and take the first road on the right to Coombe Manor. Just before the buildings, enter a field on your right and follow the path as it dog legs left and heads uphill into a small wood. At a fork, Veer right to pass Little Coombe and onto Tarmac past Smead Farm. Where the road turns hard left, turn right on a byway and shortly at a cross paths turn left to a road. Cross straight over and after about 50 metres pick up a path through trees and drop into a small meadow and onto the road at Hastingley. Turn right to pass a war memorial in the village pond and head up Tamley Lane. Look out for a path through a hedge on the right and enter the field beyond. Cross to the far right corner and into another where the path flanks and eventually merges with Cold Harbour Lane. Follow the road west and shortly after passing Robertsdane head right uphill between trees and follow the path back to the road by the restaurant. Turn left, back to the start. Hastingly comes from the Old English Ingus, meaning people of, with Lee, as in forest clearing, combined with the warlord Haster's name. Haster was a Saxon warlord who took over the area surrounding Hastings after the Romans left and before Al the Saxon landed in the 5th century. So is there a connection between Hastings and Hastingly? I'm not convinced. Hastingly Church was built by the Normans in the 11th century, although the chancel and tower were rebuilt in the 13th. In the early 1330s, an outbreak of the bubonic plague started in China and Italian merchant ships brought it to Italy and the rest of Europe. During the next five years, the Black Death, as it was also known, wiped out a third of Europe's populace. All in all, this devastating pandemic took about 100 million lives and although the disease faded to almost non-existence in Europe around 1353, it took the world 200 years to fully recover in terms of total population. In the UK, the main spread of the disease started in the ports and radiated out along the trade routes, which naturally hit Kent and Sussex hard and hastingly, like many of our villages, didn't go unscathed. Following the plague, the surviving families are said to have burnt down their houses before moving to clean ground on top of the hill, leaving the church isolated and is where we find the village today.
This innocent looking village pond also has a bit of history. It's known locally as the Witch's Pond because once upon a time there was a woman walking through Hastingly who was set upon by locals, accused of being a witch and thrown in the pond to drown. The parson rescued her but then forced her to confess at the church before she was allowed on her way. Any splashes heard today are more than likely to be a frog as the pond is now a haven for water loving wildlife. From pond skaters and water boatmen to damselflies and dragonflies this small body of water sees them all and more over the seasons. So just over on the edge of the field boundary that you can just about make out is the restaurant that's on the top of the Y Downs, not far from where we parked. So it's time to wrap up and say goodbye. Next week we'll be heading back west and we'll be visiting the village of Shoreham in the Darrant Valley. Until then, happy walking and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.